Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter 2, and today I'm gonna to be working on this EK Coupe. Uh, it's got a GSR with rods and pistons, and a set of camshafts, kinda of just like the one we finished up the other day. And uh, eBay turbo kit, old school, probably 50 trim eBay turbo, full exhaust, log manifold, uh, 1,000 cc injectors, yeah, small intercooler, so hopefully this turbo kit will be able to make what this guy wants. He wants 500 horsepower, but I said I'm not gonna push this setup that far, uh, especially on pump gas. So we'll see how far we can actually make, how far we can actually go with it. Um, <clears throat> but he did want me to fix his gauges because the gauges are not working. So the wide band doesn't work and the boost gauge doesn't work. So I'm uh, tearing into this thing to try to see why the wideband doesn't work. And when I turn the key forward, the wideband's in the glove box. Uh, when I turn the key forward, the wideband red sensor. I wiggled some wiring around, and then it started working. And then it quit working. So I looked down at the sensor. This is the sensor going down into the car, right here. So I took the sensor, and on the bottom side, the sensor is actually hitting the shift linkage or the shift linkage was hitting the sensor. So the sensor is actually broken and we're going to have to uh, take it out. So we're gonna take the sensor out. So I'm gonna take the sensor out of the exhaust and I'm going to replace it with a new one and I'm gonna use the bung closer to the turbo up here because <clears throat> that way we can route the sensor so it's not hitting the shift linkage. So I'm gonna start by taking the plug out of here, taking the sensor out down there, and then we will see what we can do with a different sensor placement, because like I said, the placement of the sensor right now <clears throat> isn't gonna work, because it's hitting the shift linkage. And it might have worked for a little while, but <clears throat> after a while <clears throat> of running it and shifting through the gears, it was wearing on the sensor and causing it to you know, have connection issues. All right guys, so I went under the car and I replaced the sensor. Uh, the sensor that was in the car is right here. I already tore it out. Um, so this bend was like this, pretty much, hitting the shift linkage. So uh, what I, and you can see that it's all tore up where uh, the shift linkage was rubbing on it. So I ended up changing the O2 position to the one that's under the intake manifold down there and I put a new sensor in for under the intake manifold there so the sensor comes straight up and down and nothing can interfere with it. So I did that and then I ran the sensor wiring underneath the battery. So I pulled the battery out, ran the sensor in there, tightened up the battery tray and stuff because it was loose. So that's all tight and good to go now. And then I ran the new sensor wiring into the existing wiring and gauge that was in there and it still was giving me the sensor code on the wideband. So I grabbed another gauge that was sitting on the bench and I put the new gauge in and now it's working. So this sensor might still be okay, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And if you need a new gauge, you gotta buy a whole new kit anyway. Uh, you can get the gauge replacements, but when I, I only stock like the kits. They come with the wideband gauge, the sensor and all the wiring. So. I had just ended up putting a whole new setup in it, new sensor and new gauge, and now everything's working good. I uh, fixed the boost gauge. Uh, he said it wasn't working, but I was wiggling some stuff around and now it seems to be working. So uh, that's good. The oil pressure gauge doesn't work and I think this red wire right there with the tape on it is for the oil pressure sending unit, but there's no sending unit on the engine. So can't really make the oil pressure gauge work unless we have a sensor to plug into. But there's no sensor, so looks like uh, got all the gauges working besides oil pressure, which hopefully the car doesn't give us issues where we need to be looking at that. But uh, yeah, so I just checked the oil, I'm gonna check the coolant, and uh, we're gonna set the base timing, get the air fuel better or closer. Also, I fixed, this was a vacuum leak, the blow off valve, because the The vacuum line was ran to the bottom and not the top. 
So the bottom port on these Gretti style blow off valves are actually for the diaphragm to suck air from. So if the diaphragm needs to move up or down to open the blow off valve, it can't if there's no air coming from anywhere. So this port on the bottom is just uh, air for the diaphragm to be able to move. So think of it as a wastegate. If you plug the top port, it's got no room for the, it's just gonna be crammed shut and there's, there's not gonna be any air space in here for the diaphragm to actually move. When the diaphragm comes up, it relieves the pressure out the top. Um, and then it, you can regulate it through a four port and that's why on like four port and three port boost controllers, you always have the vent uh, on, the, on the solenoid. There's always a vent and that's why that vent is there. So uh, kind of the same thing on the blow off valve. This is the vent so it can have you know, it can move and not be trapped with no air. So I moved that to the top and the car started idling different. Also, when this was on the bottom, this was a huge vacuum leak. I could plug it with my hand and actually uh, chug the motor down a little bit. So got that straightened out. Um, now, like I said, we're gonna check coolant and stuff like that. This is rock hard. I've only been running it for like a minute. Overflow is completely full. So I'm gonna leave this cool down for a little bit, um, just to make sure that there's not too much pressure on the hoses for me to pop the cap. I'm gonna drain the overflow because when we're tuning, we wanna make sure the overflow is empty and making sure we're not pushing any coolant into the overflow if there's a bad head gasket or something like that. But this engine appears to be put together pretty well and uh, hopefully she does good and we can see how much power we can safely make with this log manifold. He, are, he did say it's got Skunk 2 cams in it. Once again, not sure. He said that they were degreed and everything was set up, so I'm hoping we don't have any issues with uh, degreeing the cams or anything like that. Um, so I really wish, you know, we'd have a com complete breakdown of what cams and stuff like that. Maybe I'll ask him exactly what cams are in here. Um, I don't know if he's gonna know or not, but yeah. He said his brother put the engine together and uh, yeah, so he should he should know what parts are in it. So I'll ask him and then I'll let you guys know. All right, so moving on, I'm going to be fixing the idle on the car with the throttle stop screw right here. So this is on the bottom of the throttle body. I gotta adjust the idle up because the car won't idle until you give it gas for a little bit and then the idle air control valve can kick in and uh, then it idles fine and if you rev it, it comes back down and it dies. Uh, so we're gonna set the idle higher on the throttle stop. Uh, I had to run home and grab my laptop because I freaking forgot it today. So uh, that sucks. I had to drive all the way back to my house to get it. Uh, but now everything's good. We got the map pulled up. I already did the low cam ignition uh, tuning just to kind of set everything up how I wanted it to. We got the gauges working. Um, I'm gonna have to strap the car down on the dyno. I haven't done that yet. Um, Chuck the oil, coolant, all that. Now we are, uh, like I said, fixing this throttle stop to get this thing to idle a little bit better. So these are a seven mil jam nut and an Allen head on the inside. So we're gonna thread this guy back up and I'm gonna fine tune the idle so we can get it idling at around 1000 RPM uh, consistently and not dipping below. And then I'm going to set the ignition timing. got the car idling now with the idle air control valve off. Uh, it's typically what I do is I turn the idle air motor off or all the way down. I set the idle on the throttle stop. And then, uh... So we got our air fuel pretty close and uh, now if we go to display and we can see our tack, we're about 1100 rpm or so it's a little bit shaky still a little bit up and down but that's kind of the nature of a camshaft these are pro 2 skunk 2 cams 
Um, and then under the idle tab of the Honda, you can see that our idle motor is all the way down right now. And uh, our TPS is also reading three. So I adjusted it up, which makes the TPS read. So we gotta make sure that this knows it's at idle. So we're gonna go back to TPS and then the minimum reading, our foot's off the gas, we're gonna read it. Then we're gonna upload. See how it changes pitch? I don't know if you guys heard that. Now it's not as shaky because it's actually in idle mode. And you can see it dropped to around 950 or so, 1000, which is kind of right where I'm shooting for. And our air fuel also got closer. So now that this thing knows it's at idle, uh, it's probably gonna run a lot smoother. If that TPS is reading more than zero, you know, it's gonna cause issues with idle sometimes. You see that? You see that? It's pretty good, it's way better than it was. And it also wasn't starting. Now it starts on its own. Before you had to give it gas to start it. Also, I don't have the ignition timing set yet. And I also don't have that uh, set screw locked in. So I'm gonna lock that in, lock it in, and then set the ignition timing. All right, continuing to work on this Civic. Um, I had asked the customer before he dropped it off because he said that he's got Skunk 2 Pro cams. He doesn't know if they're a Pro 1 or a Pro 2. The way it stumbles a little bit at idle and the, the little bit of fighting I've been having to do trying to get the idle com completely perfect tells me that they might be a Pro 2, um, but I don't know for sure. One thing I do know for sure is he has Iridium spark plugs in it. These are an Iridium BKR8 EIX, and the gap is like 28 thousandths. So that's a problem. Uh, I got some V power plugs that we're going to put in, uh, and we're going to gap these down to 18 thousandths. Throw those in, and then, uh, yeah. So, anyways, I've been driving the car on the dyno, got cruising and everything dialed in, and. Uh, the car was having issues hitting VTEC, so I raised the VTEC up to like 6,500, and every time it would hit VTEC, it would just start stumbling and kind of running like crap. So I just did a car the other day with almost the same exact setup, and it did the same thing until we degreed the camshafts. This customer already had told me that they were degreed, so I pulled the valve cover and the timing cover off to verify if they're degreed, and they're not, they're at zero, so uh, they should run okay without having VTEC issues at zero, but we may have to adjust them slightly to get them to work. So we may have to adjust the cam gears. I'm gonna throw these plugs in. We're going to run through this again, reset the ignition timing if I move these around. And then, uh, yeah, but problem is, is big camshaft like this isn't really gonna wanna go through that freaking tiny downpipe. It's got like a two and a half inch to two and a quarter downpipe going to a full exhaust that's like two and a half or three inch uh, with a muffler, resonator, all that stuff. So it's definitely gonna be choked up and it's on pump gas. So yeah, it's a little frustrating uh, dealing with some of these because this customer's goal was 500 horsepower and it's just not gonna happen with a small intercooler like this, small downpipe, small log manifold, small eBay turbo. Um, yeah, I'm just doing the best I can here for this guy, but we're gonna try to get it as close as we can. Probably gonna end up advancing the cams because this thing's making a power curve like it has VTEC, but no VTEC is on because the cams are retarded. So the low cam is gonna paint a curve like that and it'd probably keep going and then when VTEC comes on, it just falls off. So with the settings in here right now, VTEC's gonna wanna be at like seven or 75, I bet, and it's gonna wanna rev 10,000 RPM. Well, that's not gonna happen with this combination. You're just gonna hurt parts, just gonna break shit. <clears throat> Back pressure is not your friend, especially pump gas. Also, the way that this thing was set up before with the two, <clears throat> 
excuse me, with the tune, um, the plugs are extremely rich. So you can see all the soot built up on the spark plugs. And these are an Iridium plugs, plug, which typically you would run in like a K-series car or something with coil on plug. Uh, something with a distributor still on it. I just run the, you know, copper plugs. They tend to work a little bit better and run a little bit smoother. All right, new plugs. And uh, we're gonna see if the plugs fix it. I doubt it, but we're gonna try it. So I think we have a VTEC issue, oil pressure, something like that, because it's just stuttering really bad. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the video, but it just stutters like crazy. I've tried fuel all over the place to try to like cure it with fuel. It's not doing it. Ignition timing's not it. Um, I've tried VTEC all the way from 4,500 to 7,500 and everything in between, and obviously, Here's uh, some of the pulls that I ran it to 75 or so out here. Made 250 horsepower, but there's no VTEC. So 254 horsepower right here. You can see where it's flat, where VTEC wants to come on. VTEC should be, you know, right in here to keep this going up, but it's just going flat because VTEC's not working. So um, we have to talk to the customer, see what he wants to do. Uh, this is more than just a tune on this thing. Um, so if he wants me to keep digging into it, I will. I'm gonna have to hook up an oil pressure gauge, see what's going on. And uh, yeah, this head, maybe it was on an LS VTEC prior and they forgot to remove the plug on the bottom of the head. That sometimes can cause something like this. If they forgot the O-ring in the center cam cap, that can cause this. Um, sometimes you can get away with running an oil line from the block to the head on a non LSV tech to feed it the additional oil. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna call him. It sucks because this car runs really good and he said it needs a tune, but this is probably why he thought it needed a tune is because something else is mechanically wrong. Uh, but whatever, we'll see what, we'll see what he says. Right, guys so I got a oil pressure gauge a mechanical oil pressure gauge hooked up I'm gonna run it off of the block here into the car we're gonna do a dyno run and see how the pressure is when I hit VTEC right now we're sitting at about 30 which is normal so we're gonna do a quick run Oop. and see what the oil pressure does
so oil pressure looked good there. We were right around 90, 85, 90 PSI when I was in it. So that's not the issue. The engine makes good oil pressure, but we need to make sure that the head is getting that oil pressure. So that's gonna be the next step. We got it here. Now we gotta make sure that we're getting it up here. Nah, uh, yeah. It's like it's not fully engaging. Like either the pins and the rockers are missing or the center cam cap o-ring isn't there or like i was saying the bottom of the head is plugged off like this head came off of an ls vtec this is not the head that this guy originally was running on this bottom end so this head could have issues and his other head might be fine but it's tough to say because i didn't put it together Alrighty, guys a couple days later i'm working on this uh ek again with the gsr and no vtec have the uh, head kind of apart, and I'm just looking under the center cam cap here to make sure that the O-ring is installed. The O-ring and the dowel, which it is installed. So that's all good to go. All right, guys, so uh, moral of the story here is we're gonna end up swapping out some camshafts in this engine because whenever this thing hits VTEC, it just starts misfiring and running like crap and I can't get it to, to I've tried everything VTEC wise and diagnosing and everything like that but at the end of the day the cams are just not set up for this engine um, when these camshafts come alive they are a very large profile a lot of lift a lot of duration uh, a lot of air moving through the head and it hits this brick wall of a manifold and then goes through a really small downpipe. It's just not happy. It's not gonna work. It's, it's making way too much back pressure with these cams and that exhaust is just going right back into the motor and causing stuff to go all haywire. So what we're gonna do is throw a set of stock cams in it and see if the issue goes away. He's actually bringing me the stock cams right now and uh, we'll try that. It just sucks because I have two other cars right now, one outside, one in here, that also are here for dyno tuning, uh, but this one's just taking up a lot of time. So it sucks that I have to tell these guys to wait because this one is uh, taking longer than expected. I had this issue actually on a B20 VTEC turbo car. If you guys watch back on the channel, it was an EG hatchback. Um, we had the same exact problem that this thing is doing and I put stock cams in it and the issue went away. So that's uh, definitely something to think about. And don't over cam or over turbo your Honda because I tell you guys all the time, a lot of guys run too big of a turbo and a lot of guys run too big of camshafts for their setup. And it ends up hurting power, not making it better. All right, I got everything up and running with the stock GSR camshafts. Valve flash, timing, everything's all done. Back up and running now. And uh, we're gonna do a dyno run and see if the VTEC issue goes away. six and a half pounds of boost. I only spun it to 7,000 RPM. So this is comparing the two runs. The green is the new one. Uh, it's really rich because it was tuned for a bigger cam. Uh, so I haven't really messed with the tune or anything like that. And you can see VTEC's dipping a, a little bit right here. 
So we might need to raise it uh, to like 5,500 and then rev the thing out a little farther. But you can see down low how much better the car drives. Uh, it picks up power everywhere down here just because it is more of like a, you know, street cam. And you gotta remember too that this exhaust is like two and a quarter inch. It's really tiny um, and it's only on six pounds of boost. But let's see what kind of power we can make on six pounds now that everything is working. Um, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna, just gonna get the air fuel and everything lined out and we're gonna see what kind of power we can make. So I cleaned a couple things up on the tune and uh, we picked up some power, about 15 horsepower, and uh, revved the car a little higher, about 7,800 or so. So yeah, big thing is, is changing the VTEC point. We picked up a good amount right here in the middle. You can see the new line in the middle, it picked up quite a bit of power just by moving the VTEC around. Yeah, about eight horsepower in the mid-range we picked up. So, yeah, uh, that's gonna be it on six pounds. See if we can get it up to 10 pounds or something like that and see what kind of power she makes then. All right, so we're gonna try to turn the boost up on this thing. I pulled the wastegate apart and I'm adding another spring so I'm adding the center spring into the wastegate. Uh, the spring that's in here is actually really stiff and it's only making six pounds. So that's just telling me that the wastegate's getting blown open from all the back pressure on this setup. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll make our own 10 pounds or so with uh, this spring and hopefully make 300 horsepower or more and this thing will be out of here until he wants to upgrade some stuff. All right guys, got it all back together. We're gonna see how much boost it makes now. I have the boost cut set at 14 pounds, so if it ever goes over that, it'll cut the engine. Uh, I don't think it's going to, but we'll see. Hopefully we can make our own 10, that'd be ideal. saw about a 10.3 air fuel and 11 pounds of boost with two big springs in it. Uh, but we did make some more power. 286 horsepower, 217 foot-pounds of torque. I'm gonna clean up this uh, fuel a little bit. I pulled some fuel out of it and we'll see if we can get to 300. And I'm probably gonna park it there because this setup just doesn't really make power that easily. Uh, we just added, what would that be, five, four to about four pounds of boost or so and picked up 35 horsepower. So that's less than 10 horsepower per pound. Uh, not really an efficient setup, you know. It needs a better breathing exhaust, better turbo, better manifold. Um, and then, I mean, you guys saw that other stock GSR with good manifold, good exhaust, everything like that. On 11 pounds was making like 400 horsepower so just shows what good flow and efficiency does for an engine
So that time it was like a 10.8 air fuel. Let's see if we crack three. Yep, 30, 301. Made 301 horse. The curve looks pretty good. Um, it's kind of what we're gonna get out of it, you know? It's not really, like I said, you know, doing what I can with what I got here, and we've got a lot of time into this thing already, trying to diagnose and fix stuff, make stuff work, and uh, we did that. So 300 horsepower pump gas uh, ripper. So yeah, I, I could probably push it a little farther, uh, make 310 or 320. I think I'm just gonna leave it here, keep it safe, keep it reliable for the guy. Um, very quiet. It's a very quiet car. Exhaust is really uh, quiet. So he'll be able to pull up on some people and hurt some feelings, hopefully. All right, guys, uh, I'm just getting around to editing this video right now, and I wanted to clarify a couple things here at the end of the video. Um, the car the whole time was a camshaft issue. It wasn't a VTEC issue. Uh, VTEC was working properly. I had put like two or three different solenoids on it. Uh, trying to chase this uh, misfire issue that the car had when it came into VTEC, but it just was backed up. It's It's got nowhere to breathe. So if you can't get the air in and you can't get it out, it's not going to make any power. Um, so that's just a, this is a, a classic example of that. And especially when you have a camshaft that f makes that much airflow, you need to be able to get it out and in. Uh, so small intercooler, small exhaust, small manifold, small turbo, all those combination of things with the big cam just didn't work. Um, quite frankly, it didn't really work that well with the stock cams either, but with the stock cams at least it made um, a decent amount of power and everything was working properly. But uh, this car kind of acted like, if you guys have ever ridden like a motorcycle or a four-wheeler or a snowmobile or anything like that with the choke halfway out, that's exactly how this car was. Um, just kind of acted like the choke was on the whole time. And when the big cams were in it, it was like I was trying to do a pull with full choke on the on like a small engine. So if that makes sense to you guys, try to put it into perspective. Um, yeah. Also, the car didn't respond at all to air fuel change. I went from 10.3 to 10.8, and it made the same exact power. Uh, typically, when an engine is working right, you can optimize fuel going leaner to like a 12.0, and it'll make power. It'll make power every time you pull out 5%. Uh, but this one from 10.3 to 10.8 made no power change. The only reason it made 300 horsepower is because I revved it um, higher on that last final run that we made. Um, but other than that, I mean, the car runs great. It's a great street setup, and it, it burns the tires and stuff like that. But it's just uh, when setups are backed up like this and they have restrictions, it causes issues in the motor eventually. This car did have a rod and piston in it and a valve spring and a retainer. Fully built, it's ready for some big power, but he's got to get all the stuff around the motor right for it all to come together. So he's going to plan on upgrading some stuff over the winter and hopefully I can help him out um, and we can go from there. So hopefully a lot of that stuff makes sense to you guys. Uh, it's when I'm tuning stuff, I kind of know like, okay, this thing's working, this thing's not working, and this car the whole time was just like, man, it's not taking any fuel. It's really rich. It, typically, if a setup works good, <laughs> it's gonna run away air fuel wise if the tune's not set up right. And this one was just pig rich all the time, and I had to pull out like the transition fuel from VTEC to non VTEC was like non-existent. Like typically, you want to add more fuel with VTEC, and this thing was like almost level on the fuel map so that's another indicator of like she's choked <laughs> um anyways thanks for watching the video guys have a great night and a better tomorrow if you guys have uh any comments leave them down below try to do my best to get back to all of you i know this video was kind of long long-winded but uh yeah got her done got it edited and she should be up soon i got uh Two more dyno videos coming up, and then I have a ton of ideas on videos that I want to do for you guys. So, be on the lookout. 
subscribe if you guys are new and have a great night and a better tomorrow.